did you know that Catherine of Braganza brought tea with her from Portugal when she came here to marry King Charles II in the 1600s? Portuguese traders had discovered it in the Far East and its exoticism and high prices made it very popular amongst the aristocratic circles. Now, tea was served in the coffee houses where women were not allowed to go. But soon the coffee houses had the idea of selling leaf tea to take home and soon the great tea drinking revolution of Britain began. Tea spread all over the country and it was served in the most opulent of houses to the poorest of dwellings. Lords, ladies, servants, sailors and farmers enjoyed a cup of tea. I even heard a gentleman from Nottingham say that even an old washerwoman feels she has not had a proper breakfast until she has had a cup of tea and a slice of hot buttered white bread. Now most of the tea, all of the tea we get here today comes from China and it is brought over by the East India Company who have the monopoly on trade. I should add that tea is so very expensive because of the exorbitant taxes that are placed on it but more of that in a moment. Now when these ships are on their way back from China the sailors are quite often given a little space on board ship to buy items for private enterprise and most of them choose tea. You see it's light and it's easy to transport. It comes in things like this the tea knot or more often than not in the tea brick. But they do not sell it legally. No no. As the ship comes closer to the coastal area, they are met by smugglers' boats and the tea is offloaded, hidden under oil skins and rowed to shore. Now we often think of smugglers, don't we, as being involved with rum and alcohol, lace and silk, but actually it is tea that is their most lucrative item. And because they sell it without the tax being added onto it, it has meant that tea drinking has spread all over the country. Smugglers can be cruel and barbaric people, but many of us are prepared to overlook that in order to get our favourite drink. Why then, you may ask, would you bother buying the property at all if the smuggler's tea is so cheap? Well, the answer, my dear friends, is taste. Imagine, if you will, the tea has been transported all the way from China in someone's personal cubbyhole. Then it is thrown onto a boat and covered with an oil skin if the salt water does not seep in there first. Then it is taken out, thrown into sacks and put on horses' backs to be brought in land. So imagine, if you will, a cup of tea that tastes of oil skin, salt and horse sweat. Then you can imagine why some of us who can afford it prefer to drink proper tea. The real stuff is sold at East India House and it is sold at the London Tea Auction by candle. This means a candle is lit at the beginning of each lot. Once a candle has burned down an inch, the hammer falls and the auction ends. This is to stop the price of tea being driven artificially too high. The taxes on tea, as I've mentioned, have been exorbitant for the last few years set at 119%. This has been to pay for various wars with Spain. But eventually our good Prime Minister William Pitt the Younger has brought in the Commutation Act and that has slashed the tax on tea down to 12.5%, the half percent being uh, the tax paid on entry, the customs duty if you like. This has meant that the government has a £600,000 deficit to make up and so it's come up with a new type of tax window tax. I know, it has given rise to the everlasting question what actually constitutes a window and it has brought things to a head. There is now something far more dangerous than expense on tea. It is something called adulteration. Adulteration is something that is done to the tea leaves to make them go further. For example, adding leaves of other plants in there or reusing used tea leaves. I know it's not exactly a, a crime, but it really is not a very tasty thing at all. And I know that servants, probably my own, are selling used tea leaves out of the back door for exorbitant prices. Even in Amsterdam, people are walking around with wheelbarrows full of used tea leaves. <laughs> I suppose there may be some life left in them, but I can't really begin to imagine what that must taste like. But there's something far more hazardous going on, and that is adding chemicals to tea to make them the right colour. 
copper carbonate is added to green tea to make it the right shade of green and lead chromate to black tea. It's really terrible. These are the kind of chemicals that are used in tanning and dyeing and ink and they're putting them into tea. It is said that the tea dealer is a would-be assassin ready to enter any man's home. You really have to be careful if you get a new dealer. A man who lives just up the road here did in fact employ a new tea dealer quite recently and somewhat nervous about the tea he was going to get he made a cup but instead of drinking it himself he gave it to his dog or well, the dog was dead within an hour and funnily enough we've not seen that tea dealer in these parts since but you're going to be thinking that tea drinking is all doom and gloom and I've yet to regale you with tales of cakes and scones and gossip for we ladies, thank goodness, are now allowed to drink tea in specially established tea houses. We even pay our waiters and tips to ensure prompt service. And there we may sit with our girlfriends and talk and gossip. But it's not just the tea houses. No, we can go shopping. Milliners and dressmakers will serve a cup of tea to a lady of high social standing. And then, of course, there's the benefits of tea on one's health. There is, however, one gentleman observer who says that since women have started drinking tea in this country, there's not nearly so much beauty in the land. He says that women now suffer from weak digestion and lassitudes, all of which could be cured, he says, by the leaving off of drinking tea. He also says drinking this liquid fire whilst breastfeeding can cause harm to the mother and infant. There are those on the other side of the spectrum, though. Those who think tea can cure anything. Blindness, deafness, infertility, scurvy, inflammation. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But I must say, I firmly believe that tea can lift the spirits and raise yourself in a way that no other liquid can. All this talk of tea has made me somewhat thirsty, but before I make a cup, I must tell you that tea drinking has been attributed with the growth of our cities. You see, up until now, water has been full of disease and foul sewage, but tea requires freshly boiled water, and all of a sudden, the poor can live together cheek by jowl without getting ill. That can't be a coincidence, can it? Of course, some believe that the poor shouldn't be drinking tea at all, that it makes them idle gossips and lazy. But I think those men are really more interested in their own profits than they are in the health of the poor. Making a cup of tea really is a joy, and ladies of social standing rather enjoy doing it for themselves. You see, we get our finest china out of the cupboard, and we mix our tea leaves to suit our own palate. Today, I rather fancy a cup of green tea. So the first thing I must do is warm the teapot. This should, of course, be freshly boiled water. And once the teapot is warmed, this is all going to be done rather hastily, I'm afraid, the water is poured out into the spoiling dish. Oh, somebody hasn't cleaned my teapot properly. How disgusting. Then I unlock the caddy. Tea must be kept under lock and key. It is so expensive that I don't want the servants pilfering it. I could have done with a dry teaspoon then that's the wrong caddy ah here we go and then a spoonful of tea into the pot one for me one for the pot and then freshly boiled water just bring it over the spoon to give a little rinse there now i don't know about you but i do rather like my tea to actually taste of tea and i recommend a brewing time of some five minutes i know don't just wave your little uh, tea leaves and some water there and hope everything's going to be all right it won't be <laughs> anyway you can then add sugar if you want to I know this doesn't look like what you were expecting, but white granulated sugar is quite new to us. And sugar comes from the tea plantations of Jamaica, and it is shipped like this. We can then grate it or hack it into lumps to add to our tea. Milk, of course, may be added afterwards to black tea. And then there's food, syllabubs, tea cakes, scones, cake, finger sandwiches. If it's a particularly cold day, we ladies can take our toasting forks and make crumpets by the fire. Now let us imagine if you will, that five minutes is up and it is time for me to pour my cup of tea. This, as I say, is green tea or gunpowder tea. The leaves unfurl to give off the most wonderful flavour. And so there you have it, a perfect cup of tea for the Regency lady.